of 2022. Moving forward, the World Bank has stated that the federal government may still be paying fuel subsidies, suggesting that the current fuel prices are not the cost reflective uh, in the country. It says the price of petrol should be around 7.50 naira per litre, uh, which is uh, what is currently being paid, uh, which is not what, well, more than what is currently being paid by Nigerians at the moment. Yes, uh, the World Bank is not only looking at fuel prices uh, at this time, it is putting a spotlight on the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, uh, calling for increased transparency from the oil giant. But what is the implication of this development, uh, of course, on the our entire economy and, of course, ongoing government reforms. Well, I'm being joined by a professor of accounting. He is with Now University, Professor Ophili Ogwadioha. Prof, good afternoon. Thank you so much for your time. Salut, good afternoon once again, and thank for having me here. Compliments of the season, Prof. <laughs> Same to you. Same to you. All right, Merry then. Christmas in advance. Yes. Prof, now I know that we've spoken a number of times this year about Nigerian economic issues. But now we are moving towards the end of the year. And the World Bank is saying that Nigeria needs to do more. We've had reforms. We now have to see results. In your thoughts, in your understanding, what do you make of this entire document? It's interesting to start that way. Yeah. Uh, thank you for this. I went through the World Bank report, and uh, some of the reports are good that we can take. And uh, sometimes some of the World Bank advice could be, uh, or World Bank uh, report could be advisory, in the sense that for a country, what you feel is good to beef up your economic activities and generate more economic activities you take it. Then if they want to give you a pill that you will not uh, be able to swallow, you reject that. That's what I always say about World Bank and the IMF. For the uh, discussion on the economy itself, which they say that Nigeria has uh, uh, been on reform all over the years, for over I put it for over 30, 40 years, that it is now time for resort. It is that Nigerians are expecting returns now, not reform anymore. That's a very good advice. Because uh, since I was even in the primary school, I've been hearing one type of visions, one type of vision or reform or the other. See, now that I'm an old man, and all those reforms and the... Com uh, visions and the uh, missions never produce anything. So it is time, it is high time we hear something better than reform or true. The Buhari government was all form of reform. Jonathan was a reform. Obasanjo was a reform. This government comes again, another reform. But the, the touching issue here is that the reform of this government is so much uh, stringent particularly to the economy and to the nation, that Nigeria can no longer bear this. It is becoming uh, almost unacceptable because the poor have become poorer. The rich have become poor through this uh, type of reform. Take, for instance, Nigeria imports, Nigeria imports 80% of all the things they use here because we cannot produce because of the environment we are. That one is another discussion. Since we import 80% of what we need to consume in Nigeria, what do we need? The economic advisors. What do you need to advise the, the government? What you need to advise the government is to make your uh, currency strong. And when your currency is, is strong, then the goods imported into the country will be cheaper. But when your currency is weak, the goods imported will be higher, and that is killing the country. I take again, for instance, before the government, this government came in, 
the foreign exchange, Naira was exchanged for eight, uh, 487 or 488 per dollar. Now, Naira is exchanged for more than 1,000 per dollar. Imagine it depends on the market you're looking at, Prof. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. For this, for this alone, it, it is, uh, it, it, you have impoverished people, Nigerians, by more than 100% of what they were before the government comes in. Prof, allow, yes, allow, me to, I understand. allow me to ask allow me to ask a question. But economists like you have argued that Nigeria needs to allow the market run its currency. Free market. Many economists have held that view. Now that the government is doing it, it seems like it's not working. No, the, this is I have always continued to say that you cannot allow Nigeria. Uh, Nigerian Naira to be driven by the market forces. The reason, I said it earlier, because we are not producing. As far as we are not producing, and you come here to manage the economy and manage the social welfare of Nigerians, you should make sure that the, uh, the reform you are making will not bite on the citizens. This, this is wrong. I always say that some economists may mislead the government. They mislead government. They start taking Adam Smith's uh, theory of economics, which doesn't work now. What works now is the reality of time, the reality in your own country. That's what works. That thing, in U.S., it will work. In U.K., it will work. Tell me why. The reason is because U.K. and U.S., they are industrial nations. They need their goods to be sold outside. So if they weaken their currency, their goods could sell more outside, and the economy will boost. But if our own good, weak, if our own currency weakens, the good we import into the country will be higher in price. So it is wrong to say so, because they go to uh, the, the, the economic theory that were propounded more than 2,000 years ago. It doesn't work now. What work is the reality of their own country? And this is why I say that World Bank advice, if what they advise you is a pill, don't take it because you will die. If you take a very strong pill, you may not get yourself back. But if they advise you what is good, fine. Like what they say, it is now time for returns, not reform. Nigerian government should look in what. What do we do to give Nigerians returns rather than reform, reform? There are many things we could do. One, the fuel subsidy. We, we have been hearing that every month, Nigeria was spending between three to four hundred uh, billion. If Nigeria was spending two to, I mean, three to four hundred billion every month, and you are no longer spending it, we could use this money for basic things. What are those basic things that will give Nigeria life? One is road. One is electricity. One is security of life and other enablement. If all these things are there, Nigeria will boost. You don't even need to give anybody palliative, take this money, eat it today, tomorrow you have nothing to eat. But once you provide the enabling environment, if Nigerians are not lazy, they will work for their lives and they will make the, even the economy of the nation to boost. Because the more people are engaged in the activities, the more the economy will boost. Forget all those theories they are telling you. It doesn't work here. And if somebody has been telling you something, you have been using it for over 40 years, it doesn't work. Try to uh, practicalize some local content and see how it works for you. So that's the problem of government. And it is a serious problem, very, very serious one. Then you look at, again, why is it that Nigeria cannot refine their product? Nigeria is the only country in the whole world that is an oil producing country that does not refine its product. And I, I, it is pitiable and laughable when people say Dangote refinery is coming on board. Once it comes on board, then we stop imp importation. It is not true because it's one man, it's his own personal business. Oh, pro pro and we, expect, is, we expect, Prof, allow me to interject again. We also expect Potakot yes. refinery to come on stream. And the Dangote refinery, I, I think government has a bit of stake in it, which many 
still believe can be, can be improved as we move on. Okay, it's true. Government also have some stake in other investment it had, but it's a monopolistic market. A monopoly kills economy. You understand? It's a monopolistic market. This is what the, economy, uh, the economists should look at. Because if it's the only one producing, but let's not talk even so much about Port Harcourt refinery because it has been on board every time they are about to start, they say it remains another one year. Every time they are about to start, it remains another one year. Cardona refinery, Port Harcourt refinery, Warren refinery, this and that, but it never come from every administration. So if this government wants reform, the reform is on your table. Pick the refinery first. Get your refineries work. If those ones are too old, that they cannot work, build another one. A single individual is building a refinery that we are celebrating. But we are budgeting now in 20-something uh, trillion, 24 trillion. And we cannot use a part of it to start building at least one new refinery. So what type of reform are we calling, uh, are we trying to do? Then... Uh, look at another area that touches the, 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 uh, the economy and Nigerian citizens. Oh my God. CBN in the past have taken Nigeria to a very tight situation in the sense that businessmen cannot borrow money from the banks to do their businesses because NPR at uh, 18 or 18.5 is only the base rate. Then the banks will end, we add their own cost of fund, and that will come to 25 or 30 percent for borrowing rate. And who will borrow money? Who will borrow money at 80? I mean, at the, uh, 30 percent and use it to do a production? What are you going to gain? How much is going to be your, your profit level? Your profit level cannot be more than five, more than 30, 35 percent. And if you could borrow money to at that uh, at that level, what about other costs? Cost of fund is just one single cost. What about labor costs? What about so many other costs that put into that are put into uh, production before you come out with your market price? So these are the issues. And this CBN came up for how many months now? Almost six months, and nothing happens. They don't. Even, they have not even sat to discuss NPR. So what reform are you going to do? What reform are you telling us more than these basic things that we usher, uh, usher in new beginning in the country and we start seeing results and Nigerians will start uh, becoming happy with the government? Because I believe that the, if these three or four basic things are done, every Nigerian will be happy. Forget even the fuel subsidy that they have taken up from uh, uh, 100 and something to 600. Okay, if you have done this, where are you putting the, the, the money realized from there? Okay, the government came in uh, in May, uh, 29th May, and stopped subsidy immediately. Instead of stopping subsidy on first, uh, first week of uh, July, so what happened to that 400 that was realized when uh, you stopped subsidy one month ahead of time? So some of these oh. questions need to be answered. Yeah. And the, the discussion is I getting very interesting. Uh, the discussion is getting very interesting. Uh, well, we need to also wrap up. But you raised something now about monies that will be generated from subsidy removal or that government is generating. But we see that the Federal Account Allocation Committee has been giving increased revenue to states, to local governments. Everyone is getting more than what they used to get. The last check, more than one trillion naira was shared. That never used to happen. So I see a situation where states and local governments also need to contribute their quota to helping address poverty issues across the country. What do you make of this? Yeah, that is a good one. I always said it. I, so in, in, this year, in this year's study, I say that there are three tiers of government, federal, state, and local government, that everything should not just be federal government. 
People should hold the state government responsible and hold local government, their local government responsible. Because around 48% of the total revenue generated in this country go to state and local government. Where do they put it? But what I'm saying on the issue of reform that, that touches everybody is that federal government gives this reform. It's not the state of or it's not the state or local government that give the reform. But in terms of accountability and performance, it is all tiers of government that are responsible. Because if you look at the CBN uh, issue, it is federal government. If you look at the, current, uh, the currency issue, it is federal government. If you look at the fuel subsidy issue, it is federal government. So if they take care of these three basic things, the economy will unbundle naturally. And economic activities will set in. And Nigerians will be happy. That's what I'm saying. But as for responsibility, people should hold their government responsible. But in Nigeria, it's difficult. Ask me why. Because those people are like a semi-god. Even a local government chairman, to assess him is almost impossible. Why? Because he feels that you are not responsible for his being there. Because when a governor will now sit down and pick one person out of the whole lot that are, are vying, they don't allow a, a normal election to hold, how can they be responsible to you? Somebody pick them. And this is why some state government, governors are eating deep into the government, federal, I mean, uh, state, uh, sorry, uh, local government form. Because they feel that we, we put you there. It's not even your people that put you there. These are the basic problems. And again, at the state level, look at what happened in almost all the states. Massive rigging. And is it the people that put those governors there? No. It's somebody. It's somebody with collusion of a few. Mm. Not the that, citizens. That needs to be substantiated. State. Because INEC is in charge of elections. And they reel out results, Prof. So let, let's stay with economics and leave politics. Well, but what is your outlook well, for 2024 yeah. in its entirety, Prof? Well, uh, before we go to the outlook, yes. we, we are all Nigerians. We saw what happened in the election. I cannot yes. say it's INEC. I cannot say it's the president. I cannot say it's this. But somebody did it. And we okay. all cry about it. But it has come and gone. Okay. okay. Let's look at... Uh, the economic outlook. Well, the economic outlook for me will deviate from what uh, uh, World Bank said. Because I look at the reality of time and reality of situation. What are those things we put in place today that will give us better result tomorrow? What are those things we put uh, in place this year that will give us better result in 2024. I've not seen. So the outlook is still very bleak until we start actions and activities that will uh, ginger economic growth, activities that will bring about uh, economic activities, bring about employment, bring about lower interest rate, Bring about the, the bring about lower the volatility of the Nigerian naira and strengthen the value of our national currency. If these things are not done, of course, every other thing we are saying is rhetoric. It's just rhetoric, and we, I don't. It is no good that Nigeria continue this type of thing for that long, because it is time for action. It is time for resort. It is time for return. No longer time for, uh, I plan this, I will do this, but, but we are not seeing it. No longer time for reform that have been there since over 40 years, and we have not mm. seen anything. We, can, we have seen that those reforms uh, are even bringing more hardship to the nation than, the, than before the reform came. So I advise government, in order to have a better outlook next year, first of all, first of all, 
our farming population should be protected. And what do you mean by this? People cannot go to farm freely. In my own area, in my own area, in Insuka, almost the whole Insuka and Usuwani, where I came from, were predominantly farmers. But people cannot go to farm anymore because of the Fulani herdsmen. Mm. And if farmers don't go to farm, how do you now beef up the economy? Because it's the farming agricultural activity that gives you the input for industries. How do you talk about industrialization when you will now be importing everything with this high cost of foreign exchange rather than mm. the, the agri sector producing for you and the industries or production sector picks it up to produce at cheaper rate? Then, All right, how do prof. you get... One minute. Prof, yeah. We have one minute to wrap up, Prof. Go ahead. Okay. Then, uh, another one is the interest rate. For anybody to produce and make a profit out of his distance, his borrowing rate should be uh, low. There's hardly a, a company, a production company, that will use its own money to, to produce. They must borrow. They must borrow. But if the borrowing rate becomes too high, it kills production. It kills mm. even commercial activities and it kills the entire economic activity. So that is my advice to government. The borrowing rate should be looked into. Then the exchange rate should also be looked into because we are not a, a production nation now. We are not a producing nation for now. We are importing nation. Therefore, if our currency continues to depreciate, the cost of goods that come in here should always be higher than expected. And who Prof. will be at the bronze? Ophili, Ogadioha, that's our time. Professor of Accounting, now University. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed our conversation today, uh, digging out all of the points as usual. Prof, uh, by his grace, we should be, maybe our next chat would be in 2024. Thank you so much. I have a, a great uh, Christmas and New Year. <laughs> Thank you. All right.